we're back. I hope you didn't miss me because, or I hope you missed me because I missed you. I almost lost that up, but don't worry. We're going to talk Cleveland Guardians and then high school football and then something really important and fine. But first, the Cleveland Guardians, of course. Let's look at the player stats led by that man right there, Mr. Josh Naylor from Canada. He is really good at what he does. 303 average, 15 home runs, 76 RBIs. Jose Ramirez, 289 average, 12 stolen bases, and 15 long balls. It's 15 bombs, and Josh Naylor's 15 bombs. They both lead the Guardians. Bo Naylor, we'll get to more about him later, but he has four home runs, 11 runs, and 15 hits. And Stephen Kwan, 42 walks, 15 swipes, which leads all of Cleveland, and a 270 batting average. And then Tanner Bybee, 304 ERA, six wins, 85 strikeouts. Logan Allen with 76 strikeouts, 74.1 innings, and 253 average. Aaron Savali, 212 average. 254 ERA and a 106 whip. And then heading into today, Gavin Williams, 26 strikeouts, 244 average and 136 whip. Of course, he's very good while he does Gavin Williams. He had four shutout innings today on 87 pitches. But, of course, there's also the series recaps. The Guardians have won the last three series as long as as there's no disaster, or barring a disaster for the uh, Guardians today. But, yeah, they beat the Phillies. Or, yeah, they beat the Phillies after being the Pirates. And they beat the Phillies two games to one. Jose Ramirez, four for five in game one. Josh Naylor had a run and an RBI in game one. And then David Fry had not one, but two RBIs in game one. And then Ms. Yeah, that's unfortunate. They were down 8-6 last time I checked, but I guess the Twins are winning right now. David Fry had two RBIs in game one. And checking the Twins score right now. Oh, no, sorry. no, it's 8-7 Seattle. Yeah, I meant they've been winning overall. Oh, yeah, they have been getting hot. Last night, and they're blue and today. Hopefully the Guardians can cut it to two today. But, yeah. Tanner Bybee, seven shutout innings of two-hit ball in game two. Only one run came to score for the Guardians on the second game of the series against Philly, but it was all they needed. And then Stephen Kwan hit, hit the ball four times, got on base four times via a hit, and two RBIs in game three, including a home run. But the real story was David Fry, who launched one into left field over the fence to tie the game down to his last at bat. I thought for sure the Guardians were going to sweep the Phillies, but unfortunately the Phillies had other plans. They just lit up the scoreboard in the tenth inning, and it was too much for the Guardians, who lost eight to five. Guardians against the Royals. Looking at, yep, there's Bo Naylor's home run. One of two home runs he hit last night. Series so tied at one. Mouse had. Two RBIs in game one, and Ahmed Rosario three hits in game one. But game two was a lot of fun because game one was not fun. The Guardians lost that game. Game two, the Guardians won, so therefore it was a lot of fun. And it was a lot of fun for Aaron Savali, who threw under 100 pitches in eight innings. And I'm pretty sure he was a little sad by the fact that he did not go in the ninth inning. But you know what? It still doesn't matter because the Guardians won the game regardless by a final score of 5-1. to one. And, of course, Jose Ramirez has hit a home, no, two home runs today. And what else has been going on? David Fry has hit a home run, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, he has two RBIs, which both came from home runs. And now it's 8-1. to one. Guardians just scored again. That's good. Tyler Freeman just cashed in a run. And then, of course, Bonet were not one, but two home runs. He doubled his home run total, not just this season, but his entire career from two to four. So there was that. The Naylor brothers are a lot of fun. I believe this is it right here. Right center field. 
Bo Naylor just left the yard. Oh, man, oh, man, he is just good at what he does, isn't he? Been so hyped up, we cannot wait for him to see what he does here in Cleveland. And by we, I mean us, the fans. Time to look at high school football. Because we have 23 days to go at the time of this recording. 23 days to go before OHSAA football is back. My word, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to look at the Great Lakes Conference and then two more conferences and then wrap things up. Wait, yes, two more conferences and then go right to Tommy's picks for the first time uh, this season. But yeah, holy name, Green Wave, 7-3, and 4-0. Oh. That's what I got in the Buckeye box. Six and four, three and one. Valley Forge, five and five, two and two. Lake Lloyd, five and five, one and three. And Normandy, two and eight, zero and four. And that's in the Eastern Division. In the Western Division, as Patrick Starr said. Of course, I've told you the story about that multiple times. The Elyria Catholic Panthers. 8 and 2, 4 and 1. They will tie the North Olmstead Eagles. 7 and 3, 4 and 1. The North or the Bay Rockets rather. 7 and 3, 3 and 2. West Lake Demons, 6 and 4, 3 and 2. Rocky River Pirates, 4 and 6, 1, 4. And the Fairview Warriors, 4 and 6, 0 and 5. Of course, those are the rather smaller or medium-sized schools, I should say. Of course, the small schools. Our schools like Fairview, which is Division 5. My goodness. But looking at what the schedules have in stock, where are some big games you may be wondering? Well, you got Buckeye North Olmstead, that'll be Week 4. You got Buckeye Holy Name, that'll be Week 6. And then you have Bay playing Elyria Catholic Week 6 as well. And then Week 8 is Bay against Westlake. Oregon Catholic will beat North Olmstead on week seven when they are home. So there is that. Does Holy Name play Oregon Catholic? Yes, week four, and I got the Panthers win that one over the Green Wave. So a lot of excitement going on in the Great Lakes Conference. We've covered so much this summer so far, and we can't wait to bring it to you. And now time for a word from our sponsor sort of our sponsor, the RLA Cedars Food Festival, which is going on not one day, but two days. To bully or not to bully, that is the question. And the obvious answer is to bully. <laughs> It'll be from August 4th to August 5th from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. There will be so much fun affiliated with this festival. This is year number 33 that the church is having it. There are some people that my dad probably knows. <laughs> Maybe some family members are there. I can't tell right now, but I can tell you that it's a lot of fun. Lebanese food, Mediterranean food, Lebanese culture, Mediterranean culture. It is awesome. There's some fatai you can have, folks, along with grape leaves. Kibbe, hummus, rice, green beans, peas, and the a la carte, which is the main one. This is making me hungry already. I just had a quick bite to eat before I left home, so there was that. Oh, uh, yeah. There's Lebanese ice cream and all amongst other pastries in the uh, outside, I believe. But, yeah, when you enter the foyer, there is... There are two lines that go like that, two lines like that, if I'm not mistaken. Both have the same thing. You just look for food, and there's a lot. There's, of course, I mentioned grape leaves, gibby, fataya, hummus, rice, green beans, and peas. And you can have uh, some sauce on it, of course. Green beans, peas on the rice, of course, so there is that. If you're not a fan of the food but still want to show up, hey, you're still good, you're still good. There are fries there. Other options that you can have. And there are other things going on, like live music. You want to hear some good music? Trust me, it's good music. And of course, that's there. There are raffles. 
There are kids' activities, and there's even some merchandise there as well, which is going to be a lot of fun, folks. My word. My family's going to work at the festival. My friends are going to work there. The question is, why aren't you working there? Well, really, the real question is, why aren't you going there? <laughs> That's right. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. I'm going to stuff my face in for the next two days with the best food you will find in all of Northeast Ohio on August 4th and August 5th. Of course, the Hornets do have a scrimmage August 4th against Avon Lake at Avon Lake. I don't think I'll be going there. In fact, I highly doubt I'm going to go there. But still, there is a lot of excitement going on going on there looking up the Our Lady of Cedars Lebanese Festival on their Facebook page man oh man it's going to be exciting isn't it folks nine days to go I repeat nine days to go until stuffed grape leaves is what they say it's from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. at 507 write this down folks 5 Zero seven South Cleveland Maslin Road in Fairlawn. Enemy territory, folks. Even for you guys at Wadsworth, enemy territory. Wadsworth Copley, of course. That's National Conference, American Conference, but still, for us, Highland, it's enemy territory, so there is that. Yeah, 507 South Cleveland Maslin Road. Next Friday, next Saturday, August 4th, August 5th. Uh, 507 South Cleveland Mass in a row once again. You can like their Facebook page like I did, and you can hit learn more, or at least it's not working for me. But still, it has over a thousand likes and a thousand followers. There is that. It's a lot of fun. I cannot wait for it. I cannot stress it out enough. Oh man, oh man. What else do I have to say? Hope to see you there because I hope to live stream it and show you all the wonderful world of the food festival at Our Lady of Cedars, which is a really cool place to be. I told Coach Gibbons about it. I told him yesterday after the seven on sevens going on for football scrimmages, I told him, hey, show up to the Our Lady of Cedars Lebanese Food Festival. You won't regret it. He said, we'll see. He didn't say no, <laughs> but I hope to see him there. Man, oh man, I hope to see him there after the Avon Lake scrimmage once they get off the bus from Avon Lake all the way down Granger. If I'm Coach Gibbons, I hop off the bus, get my stuff, and then drive down to Fairlawn to get some of the best food you will get all, all weekend. And then Saturday, once uh, the practice is done for the Hornets, if I'm Coach Gibbons, if I'm the players too, how can I possibly forget the players? If I'm one of the players, I grab all my stuff, put it in my locker room, you know, all your uniforms, your pads and helmets, and then drive down to Fairlawn and grab a good bite to eat. Because every time I go there for lunch, I'm usually good for dinner. That's just how it works at the RYC Lebanese Festival. Once again, please show up. We do a lot. They do a lot, rather. They do a lot. I don't do anything. But anyways, episode number 202 is coming up next week on WCTV. We'll talk more of the same, the Cleveland Guardians, as they are hanging in the playoff hunt. And by hanging in the playoff hunt, I mean hanging in the division race. It will be two games if everything holds Unless, of course, the Guardians somehow blow an 8 1 lead and uh, Seattle loses the game today. They're only up 8 7 last time I checked. But yeah, and then we'll talk more high school football. You don't know what conference we're going to do next. And then we're going to continue to hype up the food festival next week because that is when it's really getting locked in. Of course, they work year-round for it. And I repeat, year-round is really imp Im incredible. God, can't speak, can I? <laughs> it 
Till then, I'm Tommy Maroon. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to WHBW on YouTube and take care. Goodbye. You are watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.